And now, more you talk now. Welcome to Utah. We're going to have a great conversation tonight. We're talking about something that is affecting all of us, and we are inviting one of our good friends, a member of the crew, if you will have it, and he's got some great stuff to say, good things to to bring to the table and talk about the pandemic, talk about school, anxiety which a lot of these things contribute to it. Depression. We're even going to tackle abuse, which is something that uh, we're very concerned about. Um, We've asked Dr. Josh Morgan to join us uh, for this important conversation. Um, Dr. Josh is the National Director, i got to get this right, National Director of Behavioral Health and Whole Person Care for SAS Software. Uh, he's no stranger to you talk. We've had him on many times. He's just part of who we are and what we do. And uh, we want to welcome Dr. Josh back to you talk today and have this important conversation. And uh, there he is, Dr. Josh. Hey, <laughs> how are you? Great to see you. Doing all right. I'm testing out, trying to do this in my, my new house and new office. I, I guess I'm a little more shadowed than I'd hoped for, but <laughs> that's all right. I forgot. It's real. <laughs> Since the last time we had you uh, had you on the show, you guys moved and there was kind of a in-between thing, if I remember right. right, but I'm glad that you're there. Great to have you. Um, let's just jump right into it. Um, it seems to me almost everybody is affected by what has been going on, but I'm going to step out here and say that I think young adults are the most down when it comes to mental health than any other group. Am I accurate? You know, it, it's when I put my kind of statistical hat on and, and research, I, li- <laughs> I like to have firm data behind all of that to, to say absolutely <laughs> okay, yes. Okay, I misspoke. <laughs> so, I, I, you know, I, I, I don't have data behind it to be able to say yes or no. The thing that I would really think about that would impact people significantly in the the pandemic, especially with physical distancing, is negative impacts on social support. And that can affect generations in very different ways. So with young adults who, some who may be going, at least supposed to be going off or going back to college, seeing their friends, seeing their social support, and that's not happening. Yeah, that I mean, high school, yeah. you know, um, no, exactly. You know, there were no proms, graduations, yeah. uh, right? Sports are basically non-existent. Uh, marching band. In fact, it's funny. I was jogging about a week and a half ago before the fire started, and I heard some pleasant music to my ears, the ears of a drummer. I thought <laughs> that sounds like a drum line. And the, as yeah. I came down the hill and around, there were oh, probably half a dozen students who were playing quads. And I just thought, this is so cool. I didn't want to look like a creeper, you know, like kind of standing there off to the side. <laughs> and I listened, but I, I wanted to go up to him and say, what school are you from? How is this going? I mean, yeah. it, it seems like, and, and you talk is all about, you know, you uh, young adults talking to us. So that's why I brought that up. I think my concern is with them. I think it is affecting this, this pandemic is affecting a whole lot of people, you know, um, but I, I, I think targeting our thoughts and saying, okay, with young adults, with students, with teens, whatever phrase you want to use. I mean, it's it's like, you know, this interaction has been a, replaced by apps. And what's so interesting is before this whole pandemic happened, COVID-19, I mean, we have people that live on their screens. Yep. But all of a sudden yep. now we've been living too much on our screens and so what do you do? You know, it's it's like their world kind of came to an end. I mean, they were just starting, you know, a lot of them starting to get into this groove, this vibe of heading down the path and, and navigating towards their futures. And bam. Yeah. It's not that yep. the future's gone, but where they were going with it. And it, there was a barrier put up. Exactly. Exactly. Door That's closed. a good way to put it. At multiple doors closed. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, and it's. Yeah. It's got to be hard. And, and, you know, I've read these reports. And, again, I, I'm going to ask you to put your statistical hat on or at least partially on. <laughs> but, you know, I, I keep seeing this, uh, this idea that there's kind of an epidemic of anxiety and depression. 
yeah. among younger yeah. adults today. Would you concur with that? Yeah, I, I mean, the rates of depression and anxiety have always been actually pretty high mm -hmm. in the, the young adult population, and that can be broadly defined. I mean, in many sure. areas, we talk about like transitional age youth, which can go from 16 to 24. I think that, you know, very much right. the same population we're talking about here. Right. So those are groups that have been formally studied for, for years. And there's a lot of unrecognized anxiety and depression. And, and I have to say, I'm glad you brought in anxiety in this because people talk about depression all the time. Mm -hmm. We forget about anxiety. And it is significant, actually. But yes, then when we talk about in our pandemic world of COVID, the rates of especially anxiety, really across age groups, but definitely in the young adult population, have gone up significantly. I, 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 I think it would be hard to say that there isn't anybody who hasn't experienced some level of any extra anxiety and, and stress. Yeah, I would think so. Okay, now, let me ask you to give us a an urban dictionary definition of anxiety. Yeah. Somebody might be getting anxious right now, listening, going, I, you know, watching, I, I don't know. Am I, do I, am I anxious? I, you know, it, it's because there is a, a marked difference between anxiety and depression and one leads to the other. They, they can go hand in hand very well. I mean, as a psychologist, I go to diagnoses, you know, the formal okay. criteria for what is depression, what is anxiety. And sometimes that's not actually very helpful. Sometimes we get stuck in, well, you don't have a disorder. Uh, that uh, doesn't mean that it's not a problem. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so right? I mean, basically, young adults that just okay. 16 to 24, 14 to 24, whatever it happens to be, are anxious. They're upset yeah. because and, doors have been shut. Yes. And, you know, since you were, you were asking, I didn't actually address your question <laughs> directly <laughs> of, you know, what do these things look like? I think we often use the terms depression, anxiety. So people know about what stress looks like. You know, sure. anxiety yeah, often yeah. poses in the body. Um, you can have a lot of heart symptoms, GI symptoms, so upset stomachs, actually, um, other kinds of GI stuff that we may or may not want to talk about on <laughs> Instagram. Um, all of that actually can be symptoms really of both depression and anxiety. Some pieces that people may not know about as much is irritability, oh. frustration, if you're extra just grumpy at things, mm -hmm. um, that's one of the ways it shows up in me. I, I, I can say my wife is like, all right, what's going on? <laughs> you know, you're more irritable. <laughs> um, we talk about being hangry sometimes. Yeah. Th that same kind of principle, I mean, being hangry usually is very time limited, right? Once you get food in you, it passes. Yes. But if you notice an extra level of irritability that lasts longer, that kind of is pervasive across the day and the days mm -hmm plural, that could be a sign of irritability and, and or depression. Depression is not always sadness. People often think of it as that. Sometimes it shows up in, as irritability. It also can show up as a lack of interest in things. So okay. in our world, you were talking about, you know, screens, for instance. Yeah. So, um, you know, we all know I'm a big Star Trek fan, people who, who like that. <laughs> if suddenly I'm just like, eh, I don't really care about watching Star Trek, that actually can be a sign of depression. People who may like video games and such. It's like, okay. yeah, take it or leave it, but you really liked it before. Things that gave you excitement. Maybe it's reading a book. Maybe it's talking to a friend, a family member, et cetera. Those are a couple of the kind of representations of anxiety and depression that may go unrecognized and are important Ooh. to notice. Okay, interesting. Give us some more because I think this is important yeah. really um, to know for yourself, but also to know for a friend, a family member. Absolutely. Um, you know, Absolutely. what is it? Because obviously we want to give some solutions, answers, not solutions as much as answers and practical things to yeah. do, but maybe we need to know how to recognize some of these things because what Absolutely. you just said, you know, I totally agree with you. It, it, that would be a hard one to look at. Okay. They don't feel like playing video games, you know, right. for a lot of people that should be, whoa, you know, alert, 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 you know, red flags, red flags, because if they're always doing it, and all of a sudden, eh, I'm not, or, right. you know, watching start, whatever it happens to be. Right. Whatever the thing is that you enjoy, maybe it's cooking, maybe it's having a, a particular meal mm. that you like. Um, it, it's things that, that people don't always notice and, and associate. Sometimes we think of depression as sitting on the couch all day crying. That's not how depression shows up in most people, actually. Does it in some? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Um, 
you, you know, we kind of look at a, a range of symptoms and this crosses over, but again, between the di formal diagnosis and the experience, we all get depressed at some points in time. Sure. We all get anxious at some points in time. Sure. That's normal. And it's still good to recognize it so we can cope with it at mm. that point so it doesn't become a bigger problem. For instance, when somebody dies, when we lose a job, when we can't go back to school, when we, you know, all the, the losses. Can't do sports, whatever it is. We can't hang out with our yeah, friends. Absolutely. Um, you know, we, all those kinds of things. We are all individually and collectively grieving. There's a lot of grief going on. Yeah. And we don't know when it's going to, when anything may come back, may not come back. That, I mean, there's grief, there's anxiety. It's hard to cope with any of that with so much unknown going on. Ooh. So I really want to want to emphasize that just because you may not meet a diagnostic criteria doesn't mean you may need some extra coping strategies. And, you know, it, it's, it's important to recognize wherever you're at, that's okay. And it can still mm. be useful. So being aware. And I think, Steve, you, you, you brought up a really good point on that is recognizing these things in ourselves. I was doing an, an Ask Me Anything, actually, with, um, I, I, I don't know ages, it was all anonymous, but predominantly adults, people working in the technology industry, mm -hmm. a lot of software engineers and such. I was actually impressed by the level of self-awareness. Um, and then a lot of people also knowing, well, what does this look like? What doesn't yeah. it look like? Sure and, sure. and really the thing I said to a lot of them is first step is being aware of yourself. So, so yes. So those things, mood is, is one. If your mood is, okay. I, I, a big thing that I would think of in that is, is it different than your normal? Everybody's Ooh. a little different. Yeah. Some of us are higher energy. I mean, you, you know me. I can talk really fast. I go, you know, I go <laughs> That's miles. me. You know, that's me. Yeah. That can be a sign of anxiety. And yeah, I tend to be a more anxious person, but that's part of who I am. Now, for somebody who tends to be really low key and then they're suddenly doing that, that's different. Okay. Right? Okay. Yeah. And the reverse. If I'm suddenly just really slow and quiet talking, now I may be, I, sometimes I try to remember to slow myself down so it's intentional. <laughs> But if I'm like that every day, that's different that's from different. my normal. Sleep. Sleep is a really big common mm. symptom of depression, anxiety, all sorts of things. Stress. Too much um, sleep. Too much sleep or lack of sleep. Or lack of it sleep. It can go both directions, actually. Yeah. So if you're having trouble sleeping, if you're having trouble staying asleep, falling asleep, if you can't get enough sleep, all of those could be signs. That's, mm. that's important. Appetite. Are you... Hungrier than normal, or are you Ooh. less hungry than normal? Okay. You could okay. be gaining weight, or you could be losing weight. Um, oh. That can contribute to more yeah. anxiety, yeah. too. But if you can't, if you're always craving food, and that it's abnormal for you, again, that goes back to what your normal is. What your normal then, is. So you, right. you've really got to be tuned into yourself. It's helpful. And it's not, we're not talking paranoia here. No, we're not talking, no. you know, oh man, I don't want, and I think it, it seems to me if I'm listening to you right, it's, you don't want to ignore these signs. Correct. You want to, Correct. you want to say, hey, okay, I'm, I'm struggling with this. I'm eating more than normal. You know, I'm talking faster, or whatever. And right. I, I struggle with that same thing like you. I mean, I, I you know me well. I, I can talk really, really fast so, and I'm thinking even faster. So sometimes so, I'm not thinking about what I'm saying and all that kind of stuff. But, and you said something earlier. It's okay. It's okay to say, this isn't normal for me. Whatever that normal is, this isn't normal. Because sometimes, I, I know I can have have a habit of doing this. If I think something's wrong or I've got to deal with a difficult situation or whatever, it's kind of, you know, I'm going to just push it off to the side because it, it's going to be okay or I'll deal with it later. And that's not a healthy thing to do, is it? In many cases, it's not. In, in certain cases, you know, if it's short term and you mm -hmm. know that it works, that may be okay. You okay. Know, again, go back to um, you, know, you, you lose a job. You're going to be sad. A loved one, a family member, a pet, someone, somebody dies. You know what? I'm going to sit on the couch and cry. That, that's not a depression symptom. I mean, I can say, yeah, that is a depression. Yeah, yeah. I'm in a depression. That's a grief. It's grief. It's, it's grief. <laughs> and that's okay. Normal, right? You know, it's, 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 it's normal. And when we think about in the midst of a pandemic, when we're cut off and there's all these unknowns, these reactions we're having, uh, one of the things that we sometimes say is, it's a normal reaction to an abnormal situation. Oh, that's good. A normal Doesn't mean, reaction yeah, to a an normal abnormal. reaction to an abnormal situation. Yeah. If you were to face these things, I mean, let's take the military, for instance. If you're out in combat zones and you have a trauma reaction, well, 
war is an abnormal situation. Yeah, yeah. Trauma I mean, that's reaction. not normal. That's, that's not, yeah. That's right. It's, it's your reality. It's your normal while you're there, but this isn't exactly, the way things are supposed exactly to be. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. Yeah. And it doesn't mean we don't need to deal with it, as you noted. One other thing before I forget, too, is, you know, I was emphasizing how it's different from you and your experience. Mm -hmm. If you live with these things long enough, you may not realize that what you're experiencing is not actually oh. normal. So I may get used to talking really fast and all of this, and I'm just going, 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 going. And I don't know that, you know what? That's actually not my normal state. Hmm. So if there's ever a question about that, that's when it's good to probably get a, a formal screening with the provider. It can be a primary care physician, could be a psychologist, could be a therapist. Um, it, it never hurts to ask. And usually it means something is bothering you. And something, hmm. it may be impacting your day-to-day -day life. Is it impacting your your jobs, is it school, friendships, et cetera. If it is, that's when it's, it's hmm. worth talking to somebody and just saying, what do you, let, let's figure out what's going on. And it often helps to have somebody else walk alongside us. Oh, now see, I, I remember some communication you and I had prior to this the last few days as we were talking about the show. And I think you mentioned something about people are not getting those checkups, getting to yeah. professionals, you know, whatever, whether it's a, a therapist yeah. or whether it's, it's, you know, I like, I like that emphasis. I mean, again, it's not being paranoid. It's not being, you know, overreacting. It's just simply saying something's not right. I've got to get this checked out. And then that can be, that professional can be very helpful for you. I want to go back to you. You and I have had many conversations, um, and I'm sure there will be any, be many more to come about coping. Yeah, are there some basic coping skills you can give us when we start to notice something that is not right? Um, yeah. And of course, we you know we do want to encourage you to get some professional advice. It, it, you're okay, you know, it, it's, it's uh, hey, I'll just put it out there. I went for a checkup, I guess, probably about eight months ago. And, you know, I was telling my doctor, oh, I'm having trouble sleeping. I'm stressed out, you know, and he said, your blood pressure is high. And he said, I think you've gained some weight. And I said, okay, what do I do? And he goes, you got two options, Steve. I said, what's that? He goes, I can put, give you more drugs to take. I said, okay. You know me, you know I don't like to take drugs. And, and I said, so what's the other option? He goes, exercise. And it's funny, I just went back for a follow-up checkup. And he goes, Steve, I love it. Your blood pressure's way down. You've lost a nice. lot of weight. Nice. Yeah. Keep doing what you're doing. You know, this is great. You're looking great, all that kind of stuff. So, you know, sometimes I can be a little a little fearful in the sense of, ooh, what might they discover? Yeah, um, but you know, when you get some positive options like I did, I mean, it, it and I do feel a lot better. H having the evidence back, yeah, I mean, physically, I assume you feel better. H how has exercise impacted your mood? Oh, it's changed it tremendously. You know, it really sleep? has. Appetite, because, and, yeah. You know, because it, it's I'm working off some of that, and, and as far as sleeping, I don't have trouble sleeping anymore. Yeah. Um, you know, yeah. I mean, I like all of the effects of it, and it's it's weird. It's going to sound kind of strange, but I think um, those in our audience will recognize this and, and and even relate to it. It's like my body is saying it likes the exercise, it likes the jogging, it likes yeah. the weights, you know, it likes the planks. In fact, I don't want to get into all that because I can take up. <laughs> too much time, but but it's um, what are some of the basic coping skills um, you know that we can all put into practice yeah, in situations yeah. like this? Well, you know, I, I, a few things that you made me think of, and, and important to highlight is what works for you, right? Mm. Okay. And I'm so glad you brought up exercise because the number one coping strategy of that's effective for both depression and anxiety is exercise. It's really activity, it really. Is. And, you know, if we think about anxiety for a moment and, and fear, if we go back to how our bodies are made, anxiety, which is a form of fear, sometimes we, we kind of use it as a euphemism. Okay, good, good. It's fear, right? We're scared right. of something okay. happening or something not okay. happening. Okay, okay, good. Fear creates, some people may have heard of, the fight or flight response. It gets us ready oh. to fight off a bear or run away from the bear. <laughs> uh, you know, that's the example. <laughs> In many cases, in 2020... It's not a bear coming at us that's causing us to be afraid. It's a virus that you can't run away from. That's it's right. A, a 
paper that is due. I mean, it, you can't fight it. You cannot flee it. No. But our body's response to anxiety, stress, fear is to get ready to fight or to flee. That means mm. energy is being built up. Tension is being built mm-hmm, up. Mm-hmm, and you think about mm-hmm. all the symptoms of anxiety, blood pressure, muscle yeah. tension, yeah. neck pain, back pain, stomach pain, sleep problems, etc. Exercise gets that energy out. It allows our muscles to relax, tension to come out naturally. So I want, I don't like to exercise. <laughs> I know I need <laughs> to exercise. So I actually, I have an under the desk elliptical because I sit at my desk all day long. That okay. Is what I do, but it's a way to keep myself moving. Sure. I have an indoor bicycle. Bicycling for me does not feel like exercise. Huh. Probably lifting weights would drive me crazy. Huh. I would not like to do it. I have a friend who for 39 years straight every day, he has gone for a run. That will not be me. <laughs> <laughs> but you find out what works for you. Maybe sure. It's why, and, and with COVID, it's harder yeah. to get outside. But honestly, getting outside in some form, especially for exercise, if you have a pet walking a dog, that can be a really good motivation to get you outside right. and exercising. Sunlight, nature, very, very good coping strategies for anxiety and depression. Okay, now let me interrupt you for a second because we've got a a question that's come in. I'm having a hard time adjusting to virtual school. Mm. What do we say? I mean, that's a big question, but that's maybe it's a big question. You know, and I'd love to to hear any more details about what parts that may be because I I could go a lot of different directions. Okay, what aspect of adjusting to school? Um, As maybe you'll you'll write back or not. You know, there's there's a few pieces there where I can see people. One. I talked before about social support, right? Not seeing friends, teachers, et cetera, face to face and physically. That is a challenge. It's a different way of operating. It really is. I have to say, and and I've shared this with others. I'm actually grateful that this pandemic happened in 2020 versus even 2015 or 2010. Our technology was not the same. Ah, This kind of conversation even that we're having would not have happened. It didn't. I don't think Instagram, maybe, I don't know if it's been around even five years. Um, Instagram Live probably was not. It was Zoom, not I don't think existed. You nope. know, a lot of these nope. video platforms, there were some early versions. But our ability to be able to stay connected to loved ones, to new friends, so building the social support, which is part of our coping strategy, as yes. well as school, would not have happened the same way. Is it hard? Is it different? Absolutely. And it's better than it would have been even just a few ah, years ago. Ah, you know, that's encouraging, really, when you think about it. We you know, have more it, options, it, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a good thing out of a lot of not good things. Right. You know, I mean, that's a positive thing. To It doesn't doesn't make it all go away, no. but it's positive. And, I mean, that, that really, I mean, when you really think about that, where would we be? And school, you know, so many things, you know, the, the, the virtual distancing for school, Zoom. Honestly, I think I'm getting tired of Zoom calls, but, uh, you know, it, it's there. It's a great tool that can be used for education. Yeah. Uh, uh, imagine if your teacher just had to mail you packets of work. Oh. And you just had, like, it, that is uh, not, the, that, uh, that would be worse. Uh, oh, it would be crazy. Worse. It Maybe would be nuts. emailed it or, or something. So, oh. you know, that, that part, being able to have these conversations, to continue to connect, it may not be ideal. And we do have to adjust. Sure. It's something. I mean, the other part for a lot of people, too, is school now in a virtual environment is probably a little bit closer to an independent study than it would have been alternatively. So there's a bit more of I can't have somebody walk me through everything in the same way. I can't turn to my friend and go, did you catch that? I missed that. Uh, There's more put on me individually to ensure that I'm learning. That's different. And That's that a huge adjustment. It's yeah. a huge adjustment. It's a huge you know adjustment. What? Not everybody learns that way. No. Um, I, 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 and I don't know all the different things. Every school, every teacher is doing things a little differently. Uh-huh. Um, you know, I, I'm one where I, I'm an auditory learner. I could listen to a lecture and I get a lot. A yes. lot of people are not like that. They prefer to read something or they want to do something with their hands. Sure. Because of the nature of how fast this happened and everybody having to switch to a virtual mm-hmm. school without all of the planning that they probably would have done otherwise, there may be less options for how something is delivered. Yeah. And that, that, that legitimately is harder. 
So, you know, I, I would encourage, hopefully, you and, and others who have the same concern, have teachers and, and supports at the school who are responsive. So being able to, I mean, it goes back to our same idea of being self-aware. How are we struggling? Where is the problem? Okay. And if you have an idea of what else you could need and to be able to go back and say, hey, I'm struggling because I don't know how to listen to a lecture on Zoom and capture everything. It's just not working for me. Do you have suggestions? You know, or, oh, see, I love it. I love you know, it. Maybe it's, um, I, I'm really struggling with the independent study side of things. I don't know where to start. Are there tutoring sessions that can be done or, or things? There's a lot of things popping sure. up to help people walk things through more. Maybe it's setting up a time with your friends to be able to have a session where you do the homework together and can yeah. have the banter. It's not in the same room. It's not the same, but it is a way to still it's, connect and perhaps ask each other things. Exactly. Socializing. Exactly. And, and what I hear you saying is taking responsibility, okay? Taking responsibility for our anxiety in the sense of, yeah. I want to find out what, what's causing this, you know, why is my normal, you know, way out of whack or a little sure. bit out of whack? Um, okay, this is a different way of learning, but how can I take responsibility and how can I get that help? You know, get on a, a, a Google chat, do something with your friends and go back and forth. I mean, I, I think that's really big. It, it, it really is important. I want to jump where this is a conversation I think we need to continue to have. Um, unfortunately, if how long this, you know, pandemic continues and the lockdowns and all that kind of stuff. But there's something that you brought to my attention, heightened attention, I should say. It's not that I didn't know about it. I ask you the question about suicides. And, you know, I've heard people say, oh, you know, suicides are off the charts. They're intergalactic. And that just isn't true. I mean, I uh, statistically, uh, going back to, to uh, the stat man here, it's showing that there's more calls to suicide hotlines. But as important as that is to deal with, and we will need right. to deal with it, probably Absolutely. not tonight, but you brought something to heightened attention for me, and it's the the issue of abuse. Yep, yep. And, and if I can, I hope I quote you right. If not, you know, I, I think I'm getting close, that that concerns you more right now because personally, of the lockdown, yeah. personally. Yeah. And I can see that. And, you know, you mentioned irritability and, you know, people being stressed and anxious and all of these things, it's a perfect storm. It, it is. There is a perfect storm of there's this energy buildup. People are, every, we're all having to do things differently. Yeah. There are more people in a confined space, not able to get away from each other. So, you know, if you and I are fighting and I need to walk away, I may not have a place to walk away to. Ooh, Maybe ooh. I can't do a walk around the park or drive and go talk to my friends because of COVID. I yeah. Mean, the ways that we may hopefully cope. Maybe it's for parents being able to go outside of the home to work. That is, I mean, that is a way to decompress, to, to cope. When we go back to coping strategies, a lot of common coping strategies, going to the gym and such. A lot of those things are not uh, options right now. Yeah, Sports, yeah. Go, I mean, band, yeah. I mean, go to Whatever it is. So it's what do we do of, then with, yeah. with uh, a, as a, a high school student, junior high student, college student, whatever, how do we escape? And if there is some kind of abuse, what do we do? Yeah. Yeah. And I, I, I don't want to fabricate something. I don't want somebody in no. the audience going, no. oh, I, you know, we're not talking about manipulation. We're talking about the real deal. Okay, it's, absolutely. Uh, absolutely. You know, it's what, what do we do? Uh, I say we collectively uh, for this. I mean, finding that space, finding that escape. You know, I mean, for I know for me, uh, one of them has always been go sit down on my drums, you know, and mm -hmm. sometimes I will play those drums a little harder, a little firmer than normal because I'm, I'm getting rid of that, that stuff that's bothering sure. me. But this is a very real thing when it comes it to abuse. And uh, I, I was going to say, recognize, I think we can recognize if it's happening. Because it can be physical, it can be verbal, it can be emotional. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad you brought that up. A lot of people who are in an environment where abuse is occurring, this could be child abuse, this could be domestic violence. So, you know, partners having an abuse on them. And it can be bidirectional. Uh, what we call dependent adult abuse. So adults yeah. who may have various disabilities that include mental illness. 
and being taken advantage of older adults, a lot of people don't realize that it's abuse, actually. Um, yeah, there, there's... Yeah, it's easier from the outside to recognize it. Exactly. And, and I mean, I'm sitting here thinking, okay, if, if in keeping in mind our audience, okay, they potentially, as a student, could be experiencing abuse or they could be seeing it take place, sure. Absolutely. witnessing it. What do we do with that? I mean, it's... Yeah. We've only got a few minutes left. We're going to have to continue these discussions. It, yep. it's, I always love having you on because you bring a rich reality and practical coping, you know, identification things. And, but with this, let's look at that situation. Okay, I guess first one, if you're being abused, yep. what do you what do? do, you do? And, and, and I want to just add a, a piece here of awareness. I think that's almost kind of been the theme of today's it conversation. Has, really. Is, yeah. is awareness, right? Yeah. That, that is the first step of, of all of this. Sure. And, and abuse, I think, can really qualify under physical, verbal, slash emotional, or neglect, where it's, you know, people are not okay. being cared for. All right. So it, it, you all know, right. we can talk a long time about all of those. But if people are thinking in their heads, those kinds of categories, you know, one, if there's an emergency situation, okay. if you are uh, afraid of serious harm, or death of yourself or someone else, call 911, period. And I'm sorry, okay. call 911. Okay. Don't that, be afraid that's just of that. It. Yeah, don't be I afraid mean, of that. It, okay. it, it really is. You know, if you're not sure and you want to talk to somebody, there's a variety of, of resources. Um, a lot of local places have some. There are some national hotlines that, I mean, for this audience, probably useful to, to be aware of. Mm-hmm. And I mean, going back to our conversation about technology, we have technology options now. Yes, yes. Most of these have you can call in via phone. You can text message. You can chat. Sometimes it can be anonymous and everything. Yeah. So you can honestly ask, hey, this is my situation or this is my friend's situation. Yeah. Should I be worried and help coach me through it? So one website, childhelphotline.org. They have their uh, phone number, text, chat. That is for any form of abuse or possible okay. abuse if you're concerned about that. And they have and when they say child, that that's kind of a broad yeah, someone from our audience could call. I can't speak for any of these organizations, but I am going to assume that if you don't fall under the right age category, but you need help, I don't think they're going to turn you away. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I was going to say that. And, and, the and or they'll That's connect right. you with somebody else. Okay, That's good. Right. So That's it's, right. ch- what was the, uh, the web again? Child. Childhelphotline.org. Dot org. Okay. And we will put this on our blog so that, that people can, can access this. Yeah. Um, that's one of, one of the national ones. There, there's, all right. there's, there's others out there. Um, okay. Well, you know what? We'll, we'll, um, we'll put that up and, and give access to that. So that, that'll, yep. um, yep. but th- that's good. A child, childhelphotline.org. Org. Org. Great. Another one um, is thehotline.org. And okay. that's specifically around domestic violence. And, and again, okay. it's a national hotline. Yeah. Um, you know, if you're concerned about your parents, um, yeah. your, your loved ones, and, you know, or, or possibly yourself. That's an important yeah. piece to go, to go for. Um, and, and, again, you know, a lot of times domestic violence and child abuse, and a 17-year-old is considered a child from these. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah no, exactly. Child. Yeah. Yeah. They can go hand in hand. So, you know, Go to the place that you're comfortable with. And again, you can text message somebody. Sure. That is a benefit of technology and our resources today is if you have a concern, I would ask one of these these resources. No, absolutely. And, and you know what? I'm going to throw this out there because you talk is all about you talking to us. So you can text the word you talk to 411-247 with that question, with that you know, I need some help. I need some direction. Uh, you can reach us through social at you talk radio. Go to the website, you talk radio.com. You can even call us at 855-508-U talk. And that's the letter U followed by the word talk. What I hear you saying, Dr. Josh, is do something. Yep. Don't continue to, to, I'll use the word suffer or to experience maybe is a better word. Sure. Don't continue to have to experience this. Get help. Um, find somebody. And, and again, we are here for you. As you talk, we're going to post these websites and phone numbers for you so you'll have them and others. But uh, Dr. Josh, we are so grateful to have you as part of the Utah crew, as we like to affectionately call it. 
And um, we could continue to talk for the next couple of hours. I know because I know us. <laughs> and, and there's so much. So we're going to have to schedule you to come back again and kind of continue this conversation. I'm hoping that we're not still going to be talking about pandemic, but it doesn't look like there's any early end. And it's interesting because I've had some events already canceled for 2021. And I'm not saying that as a other than it's factual. And I thought, yeah. okay, somebody's got some information I don't have because these are events that happen every year that I have the privilege of being part of. But thank you so much. Again, I know you and I will be talking, but we'll get you back Absolutely. on the screen with us too. Um, we appreciate you so much. And thank you for sharing this. And, and again, we just want to remind those of you that uh, are watching and listening, reach out. Please reach out. Even if you just need a little bit of encouragement, remember, we're here for you guys, and we will do everything we can to help you get, get answers for you, to be an encouragement to you. But that's what you talk is all about. Dr. Josh, we'll talk soon. Thanks again. Thanks so much. See you guys. This is You Talk Radio.